The Wow Signal. On August 15, 1977, the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio detected a powerful, narrowband radio signal from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. Volunteer astronomer Jerry Eamon found the sequence 6EQUJ5 in the data printout, circled it, and wrote WOW in the margin. Four properties made it extraordinary. Its intensity was 30 times higher than the background noise, eliminating the possibility of a random statistical fluctuation. Its frequency was near the hydrogen line at 1420 MHz, a universal reference point in radio astronomy long considered a likely channel for interstellar communication. It was extremely narrowband, less than 7 parts per million in fractional width, something no known natural source produces, and it lasted 72 seconds, exactly the duration expected for a continuous source being swept over by Earth's rotation. What makes the WOW signal unsettling is the implication behind its properties. The signal was consistent with a highly focused, high-powered artificial transmission, something far beyond our own long-range radio capabilities in 1977. If it did originate from an intelligent source, it would mean there is, or was, a civilization capable of intentionally directing enormous amounts of energy across interstellar distances with extreme precision. Such a civilization would almost certainly be far more advanced than humanity, raising questions about their technological reach, motives, and awareness of our existence. The fact that the signal appeared once and never repeated compounds the unease, it suggests a fleeting glimpse of something vast and unreachable, a message we were never meant to answer, or evidence of an intelligence that could contact us at will but chooses not to. This combination of capability, unknown intent, and complete silence since makes it one of the most disturbing scientific mysteries in history. The 22-Minute Signal In 2022, astronomers using the Murchison Widefield Array detected a radio source unlike any previously seen. The object, designated GPM J183910, produces powerful radio pulses roughly every 22 minutes, each lasting between 30 seconds and 5 minutes. Follow-up analysis revealed the signal had been appearing in archival observations since at least 1988, maintaining extraordinary rotational stability over 35 years. This is highly unusual pulsars. The neutron stars normally responsible for such emissions gradually lose rotational energy and slow down measurably over time. If the source is a neutron star, it rotates far slower than any known pulsar that still produces radio emissions once every 1,318 seconds and lies deep within the theoretical death valley where pulsars are expected to be inactive. Yet the radio emission is bright, polarized, and exhibits characteristics consistent with the electron-positron pair production cascades that generate pulsar beams. No known pulsar model explains both the slow rotation and the long-term stability. Alternative explanations include a highly magnetic white dwarf, or a magnetar, undergoing a prolonged outburst. A magnetar starquake could, in principle, reignite a dead pulsar beam, but such events fade within years, not decades and are usually accompanied by detectable X-ray emission, which is absent here. A white dwarf could rotate this slowly and remain stable, but would require an unprecedentedly strong magnetic field and luminosity thousands of times greater than any white dwarf radio source observed to date. The inability of current neutron star or white dwarf models to account for GPM J183910 makes it one of the most perplexing signals in modern radio astronomy. Its steady beacon challenges fundamental theories of how compact stellar remnants evolve and emit radiation. Astronomers suspect similar objects may be hidden in existing survey data, and each new detection will push the limits of our understanding of stellar physics. The Peritons Between 1998 and 2015, the Parkes Radio Observatory in Australia detected a series of short, bright bursts of radio waves that appeared a few times each year. These events, nicknamed peritons, after a mythical creature, were puzzling because their characteristics did not match known astronomical phenomena. They were strongest in the 2.4 GHz range, occurred mostly during the day, and seemed to originate from within about 5 kilometers of the telescope itself. For years, researchers considered possibilities such as high-altitude lightning or other atmospheric electrical events. The mystery was solved in January 2015 when a new interference monitor was installed. It revealed that peritons were caused by microwave ovens on site. When the oven door was opened before the timer reached zero, the magnetron inside would continue emitting a short burst of radio waves for a few milliseconds. If the telescope happened to be aimed in the right direction, 
this emission would be detected as a false astronomical signal. While this discovery resolved the peritons without invoking any cosmic source, it served as a cautionary example. Signals that appear mysterious or alien can sometimes have very mundane origins, and every possible terrestrial explanation must be excluded before a deep space source is considered. Fast Radio Bursts Fast radio bursts, or FRBs, are intense, millisecond-long flashes of radio energy that originate far beyond our galaxy. The first known example was discovered in 2007 when Duncan Lorimer and his team analyzed archival data from the Parkes Observatory and found a burst lasting just 5 milliseconds from a location near the small Magellanic Cloud around 3 billion light-years away. In that fraction of a second, the burst released as much energy as the sun emits over 80 years. FRBs occur without warning and show no consistent pattern, making them difficult to detect. Most have been observed only once, but a few repeat, allowing more detailed study. The sources remain uncertain, but leading hypotheses include cataclysmic events such as neutron stars collapsing into black holes, collisions between neutron stars, or flares from magnetars, neutron stars with extremely strong magnetic fields capable of producing bursts of high-energy radiation. Their sheer energy output makes FRBs unnerving. To generate that much power in such a short time requires astrophysical conditions among the most extreme in the universe. If an artificial source were responsible, it would imply a technology operating on a scale that dwarfs anything humanity can produce, potentially harnessing the energy of entire stars. Combined with the randomness of their occurrence, FRBs represent a phenomenon we cannot predict, control, or fully explain making them one of the most enigmatic and unsettling signals ever detected from space. The Lorimer Burst The Lorimer Burst is the name given to the first recorded fast radio burst, detected in 2007 by Duncan Lorimer and his student David Narkovic while reviewing data from the Parkes Radio Telescope. The event itself had occurred in 2001 and lasted only a few milliseconds, yet its strength indicated it had come from well beyond our galaxy. This single detection revealed the existence of an entirely new class of astrophysical phenomena. Analysis showed that the Lorimer burst dispersion, the delay of lower frequency radio waves compared to higher ones, matched what would be expected if the signal had traveled through vast amounts of intergalactic plasma. Its energy output was immense, rivaling the sun's total emission over many days. Compressed into a blink of time, no known nearby object or terrestrial interference could account for it, confirming its extragalactic origin. The discovery was alarming for two reasons. First, it hinted that there may be countless similar bursts occurring across the universe, but almost all go undetected due to their brief and unpredictable nature. Second, the power and compactness of the event require conditions that push the limits of our astrophysical understanding, involving either the catastrophic destruction of massive stellar remnants or unknown processes capable of producing concentrated energy on a galactic scale. It opened an entirely new mystery in radio astronomy, one with no definitive answers to this day. BLC-1 Signal On April 29, 2019, the Breakthrough Listen project detected a narrowband radio signal at 982 MHz using the Parkes Murray-Yang Radio Telescope in Australia. Designated BLC-1, short for Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, it was found during observations of Proxima Centauri, the closest star to the Sunday the signal's characteristics, its narrow frequency range and apparent drift, consistent with a moving source, were initially intriguing because they matched what might be expected from an artificial transmitter. BLC-1 persisted for several hours and was not immediately linked to any known satellite or terrestrial source. Its detection triggered an extensive verification process, outlined in a peer-reviewed Nature Astronomy article. Researchers compared the signal against a large database of known interference sources and examined whether it repeated during later observations. No recurrence was found, and further analysis revealed subtle features indicating the signal most likely originated from human-made radio interference rather than from Proxima Centauri. The unsettling element in the BLC-1 case is how closely it resembled a plausible extraterrestrial technosignature before being ruled out. It demonstrated that even with modern verification methods, a signal can pass multiple initial filters and still ultimately have a mundane explanation. For many researchers, this reinforced both the difficulty and the tension in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Any genuine detection could initially look just like BLC-1, 
leaving us uncertain whether we had glimpsed the first confirmed message from another civilization or simply another artifact of our own technological noise. Now, you got the scariest signals, but there is a lot scary things out there. Check this video of the scariest places in the universe.